Hello and welcome to Intro to Programming and Database class. This is your instructor Saad Yusuf and we would like to now start learning about flowchart symbols. During the week one, we went through the PowerPoint that introduced you to a lot of flowchart symbols, but this week we're going to start implementing some of those details. So starting with the idea of why do we write a program? The program has three main components. It has an input, it has a process and it has an output, in short called IPO. So you enter an input into a computer program using the input devices. It processes your input and gives you the output using an output device like a monitor or a printer or any of the other output devices. So the main idea of the computer is to take an input, process it and produces an output. So this week we will going to be looking at how you can go about entering an input into your program, process that input, and generate the output. We're going to start the journey with the output. Before we go ahead and look at the first flowchart, let's have a look at the programming constructs that we're going to be learning in this class. The week number one was pretty much about introduction to programming. This week we're going to start to look at linear or sequential code. Well, linear sequential code is pretty much about that if you are given a set of instructions, instruction number one will always going to run before instruction two, instruction two will always going to run before instruction three, and so and so forth. All instructions run in sequential order or in a linear order. Therefore, this is approach is called the linear programming approach. The second approach that you're going to be learning later on in this course is about conditional programming. In conditional programming, you, have, you are given conditions and based on conditions you make decision. And once you make a decision, you take one route and leave the other. Iterative approach is another set of approach where you go through a process multiple times until an unlisted condition is met. For example, if you have to produce 500 parts in a factory setup, you will going to keep running the machine till 500 parts are produced. Every time the machine runs, it produces the same part. Modular is a fourth kind of approach, and these approaches are used mainly in procedure-oriented programming. And object-oriented programming has borrowed a lot of these constructs over and has built uh, itself on top of these ideas. Modular approach is pretty much like breaking things down into smaller components and then solving those components. So pretty much, for example, if you had to calculate an average, in order to calculate an average, you must first calculate sum. So we're going to have a component which will going to help us calculate sum. Then that sum component will going to help the average component calculate an average by providing the sum over to it. So that's the modular approach. So these are the four main approaches that you're going to be exploring in this class. Now let's review some of the flowcharting symbols that you have seen during week one. The line is pretty much about a flow line. It tells you the direction or the flow of the flowchart. Every flowchart is a starting and a stopping point, pretty much like any activity that you do in a daily life. You have a starting point and you have a terminating point. Therefore, the symbol, which has rounded rectangles, is called a terminal. Every time you take an input from the user or give an output back to the user, you use an input or an output symbol. Anytime you're running a processing instruction, you use the rectangular box. So therefore, this rectangular box is pretty much used for processing needs. So if you are taking an input from user, for example, if you're taking the user's name, you're going to use this sort of kind of a slanted uh, rectangular symbol, also called parallelogram. And anytime you're displaying something back to the user, you're going to use this parallelogram symbol. Anytime you need to do some calculations, for example, if you are calculating sales tax or if you are uh, computing the class average, anything that has to do with processing. You don't want to display to the user. It is not an instruction where you're going to be taking an input from the user. You're going to use this rectangular box. So for now, it's, as far as this tutorial is concerned, I just wanted to introduce you to these flowchart symbols that you're going to be using this week. Hope you would have enjoyed the tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.